Hi everyone, this is Sean. Hey, in today's video, we're gonna discuss what to do after a self-defense shooting. And for all intents and purposes, we're gonna assume that you're a licensed private security officer. This is designed for those of you who are licensed private security officers, you wear a uniform on the job. Those of you who are responsible citizens, you can also gain an, an edge by watching this video. But I will say this as my disclaimer, I'm not an attorney. This is not any legal advice. Please consult with an attorney if you have any other questions. I will discuss some tactics, some techniques, but keep in mind, I'm not responsible, I'm not legally responsible for errors or omissions that come out of this video. Remember, get the information that you obtained from this video and present it to a licensed attorney and ask, if these facts occur, would I be legal justified to do A, B, or C? Or after a critical incident, should I do A, B, or C? That's my disclaimer every single time. About my background, some of you might be wondering what my background is. I'm a licensed Bureau Security Investigative Services instructor. It doesn't mean I work for BSIS. It means that I have a license under them. I'm able to qualify and certify a licensed private security guards in California. That's, that's what my BSIS license allow me to do. I'm also a California Post Rifle, Pistol, Shotgun, and Red Dot instructor. I'm able to certify law enforcement officers, police officers, peace officers, for all of those weapon systems that I have just mentioned. I have over 19 years of combined experience in private security and law enforcement. So that, that's my background if, you, if you're wondering. So let's talk about the self-defense encounter situation. So this video is not gonna cover the complete, the complete anatomy of a shooting situation. It's gonna cover more or less the, the end part of it. And this video is actually part of other video series that I need to include. You can't, just, you can't just have somebody on YouTube for five minutes discussing what to do after a shooting and then that's it. You guys, you can go on and on on, the, on this topic. In my security management and leadership course that I'm developing at this time, I go over three to four hours of content on how to survive legally and how to survive practically these types of situations. It, it, it's, it's a long drawn out presentation, but in the end, it'll probably save you a lot of heartache and headache towards the end. So this is not, this is not a real gun. This is a blue gun. Okay. It's, it's a rings blue gun. This is not operable. Okay. So let's just say that you get in a defensive shooting as a private security officer. Okay. Okay, threat goes to the ground. If, the th if this person is still a threat, your finger should remain on the trigger without giving any pressure, okay? And you're gonna follow him without giving pressure, fall him to the ground. If he's still a threat to your life or other people, then you make that judgment call. That's why your finger is still on, on the trigger. You're following him down. Okay, you're, you're following them down. Do not do this technique in real life, in a real life situation, unless you have adequate and professional training in defensive firearm use. Not, not everybody is able to follow somebody to the ground when their heart is beating 160 miles an hour, putting their finger on the trigger without applying more pressure to the trigger again to make another shot. Because a lot of people can't do that under stress. Make sure that you have training. If you don't feel like you have qualified training, your training is substandard, okay? Don't put your finger right here unless, unless you intend to shoot somebody, unless you intend to destroy somebody, okay? You can, you can even put it up here, okay? You can put it on top of the trigger guard along the frame. You can fall on the ground here if you, if you want. But if you're trained to do so, finger stays on the trigger, no pressure on the trigger and you're following them down, okay? At this point in time, if you have not already, go to a position of cover, whether this be a tree, an engine block, something that will most likely prevent a bullet from passing through. Now, if this person produced a handgun on you, then you want to go to an area of cover that is most likely gonna stop the handgun around. If this person had a rifle, and obviously try to go to a position of cover that can most likely stop a rifle round. Fall on the ground, 
and you tell them, drop the weapon, drop the knife, drop whatever it is. And you need to say out loud, do not make me do this again. Do not make me do this again. You can also say, do not make me shoot you again. But make sure that you emphasize the words, do not. Don't go out there and tell this person you're gonna fucking blow his head off. Um, again, guys, that looks horrible on video camera. And I didn't say this, I haven't said this in previous classes because now it's more of an issue. The, the jury doesn't like it when you start cussing at people. They, they understand, those of you who've been in these types of situations, you understand that your emotions override your critical thinking sometimes and you just say what's on your mind. And some of you might be thinking, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say the F word out loud or lay some F bombs out loud so that this person's really scared of me. Uh, well, this person gets the point. If you, if you believe it's necessary, go ahead and do so. It looks horrible on camera. So you, so you give them that, that order, okay? If you're still a threat, then it's up to you what you need to do next, okay? But let's just say the threat has stopped, okay? You're, and I know it's kind of hard to see on camera right now because I, I, I'm my only cameraman. So please, please excuse me. But after he's down, okay, go, start walking backwards very carefully to a position to cover, okay? Have your focus on the threat. If, the, if, the, if, if this person is no longer in the fight, okay, scan, okay? Wherever your eyes go, muzzle of your gun also goes, okay? You're gonna, you're gonna scan for more threats. What kind of threats are you scanning for? You're scanning for an additional person who's armed, a friend, and you're also a co-conspirator, and you're also scanning for law enforcement officers that are on the way. Because I guarantee that if you get involved in something like this, you, you, might, you might be tunnel visioned on that situation, and you're not gonna see the big elephant that's to your rear. You might think that this is all a bit of fantasy, fun and games. It's not. This is, this is, a, this is reality. This can, this can certainly happen. So you're scanning for more threats, scanning mean, meaning other armed people, and also law enforcement officers on the way. They might not know what they're coming across. Okay, they, they don't know you. Most of, most of the law enforcement officers on, that, on your beat, they probably don't know who you are. And if they, knew who, if they know who you are, when they arrive on the scene, all they're gonna see is your gun out. They're not gonna be able to put a face to the gun. They're gonna just zone in on that gun that, that you have out. Fall on the ground, go to a position of, of cover. And then what you're gonna do is get your phone, and this is assuming that you don't have a dispatch, you don't have anybody that's able to call the police for you. Pick up the phone, okay? But I still want you to be concentrated on the threat and any other future threats. At this point in time, you can actually put your gun to a low ready position, okay? And it's really hard to show on, on camera, but you're gonna, you can lower it, okay, offline. And what you're doing is you're dialing 911, put it on speaker. Don't be surprised if they don't answer. Right now, we have a difficult time recruiting law enforcement. We have a difficult time recruiting public safety dispatchers. Do not be surprised if you call 911 and they don't answer or they tell you to leave a message. Don't be, don't be surprised, always have a plan B. But let's just say, to your luck, they answer, okay? Put the phone in your pocket, come out like this again. And again, I want you to scan for more threats. As you scan, I don't want you to be muzzling witnesses, victims. This gun goes directly, it's almost at that 45 degree angle, okay? You're, you have it lower here, you're scanning like this and you're looking for the more threats. Operator 911, operator's uh, dispatcher says, 911 emergency can help you. This is what you're gonna say. I'm at 123 Main Street, Anytown, California. We're at the northeast portion of the mall my name is Sean Sundahl. I'm a private security officer on premises. I've been involved in a self-defense shooting situation. Please send me a police officer and please also send me the fire department. Send me EMS. Please come here quick. At this point in time, 
They're gonna ask, start asking you all kinds of stuff. What's the suspect wearing, everything else. See this phone right here? It goes right in your pocket and you're still gonna focus for the threats. Answer the dispatcher as much as you can, keep it on. At this point in time, when you're waiting for them to arrive and what, what, what is a minute is gonna feel like 10 minutes. What you're gonna do is look for more threats, okay? And lower the gun, this position here. The next thing that I want you to do is shut up. Shut up. Now I'm gonna be blunt and abrupt about it. You need to shut up. What does that mean? It means shut up. If the dispatcher is asking you a question, such as description or height, weight, a direction of travel, you can answer those questions. But if they ask you what happened, I've been involved in a self-defense shooting. Other than that, shut up. Don't say how bad you feel about the situation. Don't say that it was all a mistake. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done, shut up, shut up. All you do is answer factual questions that don't involve around what happened. That's it, just, just shut up. Because what you're gonna do is you're gonna incriminate yourself. There's a lot of attorneys out there that they want, to, they want you to hire them. They're gonna tell you to be quiet, to plead the fifth, and that's great. It's great to have an attorney in route. It's good to have an attorney doing this, but the attorney is not the one that makes the phone call 911. Do you have to make the phone call 911? You do not, but if you do, okay, it makes you look like somebody that values life because you're calling for two reasons. Number one, you're calling as a way to be transparent with the public, with the police, the jury. Hey, I called the police. I said I'm in the self-defense situation. And then number two, you're showing empathy for human lives. This dirtbag just tried to kill you. you. You still gotta show some type of empathy for this person. The courts love it. The jury also likes it. And as a, just as a human being, this is, it's awful to take somebody's life or to attempt to take someone's life. At least let's try to give them a second chance. So when you call for EMS, you're gonna be a little bit more likable person. Okay, don't just do it for the jury, don't do it for the court, but do it for yourself. You might hear the sirens, you might not. I'm gonna say this again, you might not hear the sirens. The, si the police car can be right in back of you, but because of auditory exclusion, you might not even hear the sirens in the back of you. That's why I want you to be constantly scanning, gun, aim towards the floor, the grass, low ready, okay? Some of you might be asking me, Sean, at what point do I holster my gun? That's up to you. But a general rule of thumb that I personally would follow is this. If the threat that is on the way is greater than the threat that's in front of me, then I will put my gun away. If this person is still a deadly threat, why in the world, why in the hell would you put your gun away if this person's still a deadly threat to you? No, if this person's still a deadly threat, you need to address the threat or keep eyes and muzzle on target, okay? Police show up, it's very important that you follow all the orders that are given to you. You might hear some screaming from law enforcement, the police, that you might be, you might think that's directed to the guy that you just shot, but it might be directed to you. So you need to listen and pay careful attention. The police are there, I might actually lower my gun a lot more. Okay, to the point where it's, it's almost 90 degrees parallel. Well, it's almost parallel, perpendicular to the floor. Let's make it easy. Muzzle's facing the floor, okay, in, 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 that, in that direction. Listen to whatever they're saying. If they tell you put your gun down, then you will put your, you put your gun down. Some of you might be thinking, look, I'm not going to ever surrender my gun or put my gun down. That's up to you guys. Law enforcement officer on the way has no idea, has no clue what just happened. Not a clue at all. And most of the time, they, they just, they wanna help. They wanna make sure everybody's safe. So listen to whatever they're telling you. But whatever you do, don't turn around towards the police with a gun in hand. 
You do that, you're not gonna be able to watch part two or part three or part four of other videos that I'm gonna produce, okay? This is just little tidbits of information I'm gonna provide to you. I don't represent any law enforcement agency, no district attorney's office, I don't represent any employer. This is just my own personal opinion. These are my observations with over 23 years of law enforcement and security combined experience. This is my experience of being a professional trainer, a fireman instructor, getting an input from instructors who have a lot more experience than I do. If you have any other comments, suggestions, concerns, please leave that information in the comment section below. I'm very, very, very looking forward to the dialogue here. You guys all take care and be safe.